Now, Milkshake, it doesn't say anything about him buying Twitter in here. Damn, kids, what is all that racket? I'm trying to read my Elon Musk book. What is all that racket? A bracket. Yes, that racket. No, a bracket. Yes, that racket. I am literally making a bracket for the van. Oh, okay. What is up friends and family, but most likely just family since I think my parents are probably the only people watching these YouTube videos right now. But if you did watch our last video where we installed our Dometic AC unit, you'll notice the whole theme of that production was all about hashtag saving the roof height. Now we did get halfway there with the DIY van adapter and the spacer, that's an amazing piece of kit. But when we pulled out the bracket for the Dometic unit, we noticed we had another problem. If you look at the way that this is fabricated, it's actually just pinched on the end here. This is the portion that actually touches the roof struts in the vehicle. And so you're automatically losing half of this bar width in roof height. And then because the screw isn't counterboard, you have to add in the head height and the lock washer there too. So that's why we wanted to solve these problems by fabricating our own bracket. I've got three brackets sitting in front of me on the table here. Let's cover them top to bottom. The first is the stock bracket that comes with the Dometic unit. The second is my first attempt. And the third is my final design here. The difference between my final design and the first attempt is I actually made the mistake of assuming, I didn't even measure, that these holes were centered in the cutout. They are not. They are shifted slightly towards the front of the vehicle, as you can see in my final design with the holes offset in this direction. The second change I made is I actually lengthened this support bar here so that that would put the contact area to this plate closer to the strut. That just stiffened things up a little bit. So let's put everything we need to make the second bracket in front of us so you can see all the materials I used. All right, here's everything we need to make the second bracket. I've got this piece, which is a 21 inch long, three quarter by three quarter by one eighth inch wall thickness square steel tubing. It is 332 millimeters between the two holes for the attachment to the Dometic unit. So that ends up being 4.664 inches from this end and 3.313 inches from this end. Um, the decimal places are a little weird just because of the metric to inch conversion. Then I've got these two plates. These are 1.5 inches wide by 1 8 inch thick and they're cut down to 3.5 inches each. Those go on the end. And then finally I've got this 3 quarter inch steel bar which I cut down to a rough cut 5 eighths of an inch. These basically get sunk into this bar here and that allows us enough material to actually counterbore for our screws so that the screws end up being flush and don't take away from our roof height. So we're going to turn these down on the lathe, we'll cut these down on the mill, and we'll weld all this up and have bracket number two ready. We got the flat bar set up in the mill and we're going to be using this really neat tool. This is called an edge finder to actually locate the part so that we can accurately cut the slot for the bar. Um, this little tool has like this movable end and it basically allows you to come up on the side of the part and touch it and then as soon as this thing moves out you know that you're right on the edge. So we're going to tap off with this, set our DRO to zero, and then uh, cut the slot. Since the mill cuts with a round bit, we actually have to come in and clean up the corners with this file here. All right, now we're getting ready to make the cuts for the counterbar plugs. We tapped off on the end and the side, same with the edge finder before. And we have a three quarter inch hole saw that we're gonna use to cut a hole for the plug. And the plug will just slip right in there since that's a 0.375 inch diameter bar. 
So we're gonna go ahead and cut these two. All right, we're over on the lathe now. We have our plugs and we're gonna face them off to length, drill the hole and then counterbore for the screw. So let's turn on the machine and get it done. That was a little lathe joke for the dads out there. Let's face it, it wasn't even that punny. But for real, this is actually called facing. Basically, I'm squaring up the ends and cutting the material down to an exact length. After the length is dialed, I come in and give it a little kiss with a center drill. This helps give a centered landing pad for the s size drill bit I'm using here for the M8 clearance hole. I'll go ahead and drop a link in the description below for my favorite tap drill chart. Shout out to the little machine shop. A quick tool change and we're on to the boring part. Get it? Boring? Here I'm simply breaking the sharp edges on both sides with what the technical folks call a chamfer. But I prefer to call it a chamfer, like champagne. Yay! Okay, we are almost ready to turn on the heat and weld these pieces together. We got our main bar that we chunked out with the hole saw. We got this little boss that we turned on the lathe that fits in there nice and flush just like that. And then we've got this flat plate that we notched on the mill that goes on the end of the part just like that. We're going to be welding this together with a TIG welder or tungsten inert gas, um, named because the electrode is tungsten and then inert gas argon floods the area to prevent oxidization. And then I'm going to be using weld mold 880. This is an 045 uh, rod. Uh, this is just what I use for bike building, so I have it around. Uh, it's a great steel to steel rod. So let's go ahead and fire up the welder and finish this bracket. When I'm welding, I always like to do a trial pass to make sure I'm comfortable for the entire bead I plan on laying down. That's what I did quickly before I started this weld. For my setup, I'm using a number 10 cup with a gas lens, a 332nd inch electrode, I'm pushing 15 CFM of argon over the surface, and I have amps set to 100. Welding is by far one of the most useful skills I've picked up in my lifetime. I highly recommend looking into it if it's something you're interested in. With the inverter TIG machines, it's actually become a lot more affordable and accessible these days too. After welding, I went to town on the brackets. In this instance, town is a metaphorical place where an angle grinder loaded with a 120 grit flap wheel creates a spark show as the brackets get cleaned up. This gives everything a uniform look and blends the components into one another so they look like a single piece when painted. Speaking of paint, let's jump to the next clip and see how we did that. I've got both brackets set up here and I've got this lovely makeshift paint booth. First up is primer. Wow, would you look at that technique? He really is a natural. He's laying it down in short little bursts, making sure that it doesn't drip. Okay, the primer's had a chance to dry, and next up is a coat of high-performance enamel. I actually had this paint left over from a project I was working on before. Really, any rust preventative paint from your local hardware store will do. Brackets sitting in front of me here, and before they go in the van, we're gonna do two final things to prep them. First is we're gonna take this pressure sensitive adhesive backed rubber. This stuff is super thin, highly tear resistant. Um, this is just gonna help avoid metal to metal contact. I'll put this in the link in the description below. I bought this stuff from McMaster Car, which is a really great industrial supply website. If you haven't heard of it, I highly recommend checking that out. And then finally, um, because I wasn't able to fully paint in the ends, or at least I don't think I was able to fully paint in the ends, I'm just gonna spray a little bit of this in there. This will just kind of dry and create a anti-corrosive shield on the inside of the metal. This is steel, so if any moisture or any humidity gets in there, it will eventually rust. So that's just a, a rust preventative measure. So we're gonna do those two things, and then these are ready to go in the van. So the order of operations here will go a bolt, then we'll put the lock washer on. That will all go through the bracket into the countersink. And then we have a nut that goes on the back here. And initially we just kind of thread that all the way down. This nut will be used to tighten on the back side of the bracket to just really lock everything into place. It acts as a jam nut pretty much um, so that the bolt will never come back out.
Probably a nice shot of my armpit there. Sorry about that. these brackets. These turn out so good. Alright, there's one up. We're gonna do the other one here. I am missing a lock washer, so I'm gonna go find that before we install the last bracket. I'll be right back. Alright, we found the other lock washer. It was over on the lathe where I was using it to verify how deep I needed to turn these down. So we've got that back. Let's go ahead and get this other bracket up. Man, these brackets turned out really nice. I'm really excited at how these look and how these feel. Um, I think it's just gonna make a world of difference to have you know, the roof height saved, um, that was really the big thing. Um, and then this, you know, Dometic, completely flush to the ceiling here. Um, I think it was worth the extra effort. Now we hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And on your way down, go ahead and smash. Is it smash? Is that what the young kids are saying these days? Slap. It's slap. Oh, slap. Go ahead and slap that subscribe button on your way down. And we'll see you next time.